This episode of the CMO Suite is brought to you by Uconnect. Uconnect provides digital solutions and teams to brand CMOs, VPs, and marketers looking for true transparency in the biddable media space. From paid social and PPC to complex platforms like the Trade Desk, brands from across the world have connected to Uconnect. Visit them today at Uconnect.com and No Kid Hungry. We're proud to promote No Kid Hungry and their many initiatives to help kids in need of meals. No Kid Hungry helps kids be kids, not be hungry. Visit them at NoKidHungry.org. And finally, we're proud that Season 3 of the CMO Suite is presented by the CMOCouncil.org as their official marketer's podcast. The Chief Marketing Officer Council is the only global network of executives specifically dedicated to high-level knowledge exchange, thought leadership, and personal relationship building among senior corporate marketing leaders and brand decision makers. The CMO Council's 15,000 plus members control more than $550 billion in aggregated annual marketing expenditures and run complex distributed marketing and sales operations worldwide. For more information on membership, visit thecmocouncil.org. Let's start the show. Thanks for hanging out in the CMO suite. The podcast for marketers who want to be in the know. Presented by Connectivity Holdings. Hello, hello, and welcome to the CMO Suite. This is Sean Halter. I'm your host. The CMO Suite, as you know, is brought to you by Connectivity Holdings. I am incredibly excited today that our guest is Kevin Collins. Kevin is the CEO of Global Widget. They are a leader in the CBD industry. They have multiple brands that fall underneath the Global Widget uh, holding group. And we're going to talk a lot more in depth, uh, not only about uh, how he got started in this business, but we are going to talk about the fact that this is literally probably one of the hottest industries that are out there. There probably isn't a conference, a trade show, anything related to marketing and advertising that I go to that I don't either hear or see somebody asking about CBD. What is it? How is it building? Is it really going to be the be all end all of the industry? And Kevin has been really uh, a kind of a forerunner when it comes to that. We've already found out a bunch of information that we kind of thought we knew what the industry was and we're finding out a lot more about it. Uh, and we want to thank Kevin and his team for that. But we thought this would be a great opportunity to have somebody who's at the very tippy top Tell us how they got into the industry itself and what's uh, happening next. So, Kevin, welcome uh, to the show. Thanks for having me. So, how was that intro? Did I did I come close to uh, <laughs> correctly introducing uh, you? Yeah, president of Global Widget. Yep, sounded really good. The hardest part for me is going to be sitting in this chair. I'm used to you're used to you moving know, around, moving around a lot of energy. You know, it's funny. I uh, uh, you know me a little bit, and I'm I'm the same way. There's somebody that told me the other day that I just. Uh, I, it, they didn't have ADD when I was a kid. They didn't diagnose it, but I'm, I must have probably had it. If if you had brought a few of the uh, CBD gummies and you know I'd, I'd used a few of those before the show, I'd probably be in even better shape. Let's jump right into it. How long have you lived here in uh, Florida? Did you grow up here? Moved down when I was about five, so I consider myself a Floridian. Where did much. you live? Where were you born? Born in New Jersey. Okay. Parents moved to get out of the cold weather. Not, yeah. Nothing crazy. Got down here when I was five, and I've been here ever since. Call it home. Love it. Never going to move. I'm a Florida guy from the... Tampa, the core. Tampa area. Did you grow up in Tampa or uh, yeah, somewhere literally else? in Tampa Palms area? So new Tampa yeah. and watch it kind of blossom. Um, now I live in uh, the Lutz area and I love it. So you grew up here, have uh, f uh, family still live here? Any brothers and sisters? Only child. Really? Uh, yeah. All my family still lives in New Jersey, actually. Okay. I'm trying to now get them down here. As many of them as you can. Exactly, right? and that's uh, that's not unusual. Let them let them sit through a few more uh, a few more cold winters. So, only child, only child, man. That's all you know when you're an only child, right? So you don't have a sister that you can fight with or a brother who beats the crap out of you. Did you have uh, friends that lived close to your you know your family kind of growing up that kind of became those surrogate brother and sister for you, or did you end up kind of finding that you spent a lot more time with your with your family kind of growing up? Uh, what was what was that like? Probably a little bit of both. No. Um, I definitely actually still have a lot of the same friends I did when I first got down here from when I was 10, 11, 12. I kind of keep that same core group. Um, something my dad has done, I kind of just replicated that. I have a pretty tight core knit group of family and friends that I hang out with. Obviously, it's uh, I've been in the area a lot, so I know a lot of people. And that's a blossom, but. And sometimes that's unusual for people uh, in Florida. Again, uh, as most of our listeners know, we do a lot of our shows out of the iHeart Studios in New York City. We're doing a few episodes uh, right here in Tampa, Florida. We are in the Thumb Stopper uh, Studio, podcast studio. Uh, you've also just built your own studio uh, over at uh, Global uh, Widget, am I correct? Yeah, we actually built a podcast area so that we could start taking advantage of, you know, educating people. That's the biggest thing that uh, people aren't educated on CBD and there's a lot of market confusion. So one of our goals is try to just educate people from the consumer to the wholesaler, to the store itself, 
the whole gamut. So, you know, we plan to do some big things with our podcast, get some influential people on. And quite frankly, within our own business, we have a lot of great people that could, you know, benefit add, from add a lot of value yeah. to, to people. It is one of the beauties of, of podcasting to some extent. You know, I, I grew up in um, radio. That was one of my first jobs was, was first I was in entertainment and then I ended up in, in radio sales. So I, I kind of grew up around the audio industry to some extent. It's, interesting to see it coming almost as a resurgence. And I know for me, again, you know, we, we, you know, a lot of us travel in our cars or you, you travel in some place and maybe you want to listen to some music, but you want to listen to some content. Content is certainly a uh, key, um, but it gives you a chance to really kind of find some interesting niches. And to your point, certainly we want to spend some time talking about CBD and just the, the, the craziness of the industry itself and just the, the um, lack sometimes of good content out there for people who are trying to understand it, whether it's from a consumer standpoint or a marketing standpoint or business to business standpoint, there's so much room mm -hmm. uh, to push good content out there, just help people understand kind of what it is and, and really what it isn't. And that's, you know, I don't want to say that's unique for that industry, but for something that already generates billions of dollars in revenue for there not to be even more content out there to help people know what, where is it legal? Yep. What's the difference between that and hemp? What's the difference between that and um, the derivative that's in marijuana? It, it is kind of amazing that it grew so big so fast without there really being more out there in the marketplace. And, and maybe maybe you've got an opinion on why that is. Uh, do you feel like maybe some of that is just because there's such a need for a lot of those products and people had to kind of go figure it out on their own? Um, why do you think it's been able to to grow as big and fast as it has without more education out in the space. Right, and that's uh, to piggyback on what you said prior is one of the reasons I wanna do the podcast is there is a lot of content out there, but is it the right content? Who's putting Fair that point. content out there because it's a new industry. So one of the reasons I wanna do a podcast is we have people that are very educated on CBD from marketing, sales, compliance, the whole gamut. So one of our big things is come see us because you have to really see what we got going on to understand and believe how educated we are. Because, you know, you go to a lot of these conferences and trade shows and there's hundreds and thousands of CBD brands. And, you know, everyone has to start somewhere. But at this point, you really need to know what you're buying and where you're buying it from. So really, we're really trying to get people to come to our facility, see what we got going on. And through our podcast, we want to really touch on that and, and tell people, you could trust what we're saying because we've been in this. We know what's going on. We've seen all the trials and tribulations, and we're prepared to educate you on what is the truth. And that's kind of what we're trying to put forward is come see us, come come really understand all that we're doing because we're trailblazing and we're pioneering. Yeah. And that's one of the hardest things is there's no historical data to go off of. So everything we do is really blazing the trail and pioneering. Well, and you talked about one of the, you know, one of the things that you just said and again, it's Kevin Collins, CEO of uh, of Global Widget, and I want to get into that name and, and where in the world that uh, came from. But you said everybody has to start somewhere. You know, we felt like it was important to have you on this show for a couple of reasons. One of which is, you know, there's a lot of CMOs, there's a lot of VPs of marketing of massive companies, and you know, they're always trying to um, figure out what they don't know. You know, when you're in an industry, let's say it's the film industry, or you're in the consumer packaged goods industry there's set ways that you do what you do. And when we pick up a client like that with one of ours, you know, um, again, they might have a budget, you know, of, of, of $2 million or $8 million or $10 million. When they come to us, there's already historical to be able to work from mm -hmm. to some extent. So, you know, anybody can look through, spend like that and pick out some things and try to make some things happen. But to your point, you guys are really trailblazing. And so, What's been interesting from at least our perspective and why we thought it was important to have you on the show is to help a lot of those marketers understand how do you literally build a brand from scratch? Because a lot of them have never had to do that. Right. You know, they've never had to take, uh, a. you know, they may have worked on some smaller brands, but, you know, brands that are already generating millions and millions of dollars who've just never had to market. It's, it's a unique aspect. It's a unique industry. And certainly you're going to see millions and millions and millions of dollars over the next couple of years of those brands trying to fight for ownership of the space. And again, you know, from what you said, we'll probably see a lot clearing out from the bottom of people that just either didn't have the capital revenue to be able to do it or couldn't figure out how to educate consumers in the space to become that, that voice. Right. You know, you only get to be that once sometimes in an industry. You only get to be Coke. You only get to be Kleenex. You only get to be these brands that represent mm -hmm. whole industries 
once. And kind of once you do, once you're the McDonald's of that, then it's really hard. I mean, look how much money Burger King has been spending for you know years and years and years and years and years to try to overtake McDonald's. And you know they may never do it. So it'll be interesting to see how you kind of get in and how you build just that piece. And you know, probably the only way to do that is certainly from from a marketing pers- you know perspective to some extent. It's the only way you can create that reach right. uh, out there in the market. So how did you get into well, this industry. Yeah. Luckily for us, we started with sales, not marketing. Yeah. And that was probably the smartest thing we did is we only focused on sales. We did no marketing in the beginning. And we're actually trying to seeing that now where so many new companies are coming in with no sales and trying to market and pitch ourselves as this huge company and they do X, they do Y, they do Z. We started selling. So you've got a great infrastructure to build off of. Correct. And you know, one thing that I try to get across to people is we have, right now we have 208 employees and that is literally just to facilitate our brands. And one of our brands, Hemp Bombs, is 95% of our revenue. So if you think about it, you know, we have 208 people just to support one brand of yeah. CBD products where it takes every single person in my company to do that, whether it's a customer service person, our data scientist, our chief compliance officer, our creative director. I mean, we do everything in house. So that's probably one of the reasons we have so many employees. But I think that's extremely important because you get so much more collaboration done. You get people really engaged and really caring about the brands because everything they do, they get to see, you know, in terms of our social media people, they get to see the work they're doing and putting forth and the organic growth. And I try to make sure that everyone knows within my company, everyone matters big time. Sure. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter if it's the manufacturing guy on the floor putting a gummy in the bag or if it's the data scientists throwing numbers together. We need all 208 of these people to, to make this ship run, Yeah, you know, and run good. Um, I think what I've actually learned the most about the market is people are the most important thing. And really the way that I've built the business is hiring talented people and letting them put their skills to use and seeing how that really blossoms. Yeah. And so that's a good point. I want to make sure I get back to how you got in the industry in the first place. But, you know, people are critical to this. And certainly if you can find people that can be open with you and honest with you and transparent with you, whether that means in-housing your entire team or you have big groups of in-housing and then you utilize industry experts for other parts or pieces to kind of help navigate you on the stuff you don't know yet. um, And then you figure out those elements from there. Uh, it's still a people business to some extent. You still need to put people in front of you that have a knowledge or understanding of what it is that you're trying to accomplish. That'll tell you when the, you know, w- when the sausage is right and when it's not right. You know, sometimes I think what we find is some of the best um, uh, brands to work with are those that know that something's not going to happen right sometimes. And if you can find those people to understand that and work as collaborative, you know, collaboratively as you can, yep. it certainly helps you to be able to to not just be sweeping things underneath the rug, like don't look over here. It helps you figure out what, you know, what isn't right and how can you really build that and grow that faster. So how did you get into the industry? So, yeah. Um, I don't want to say like, you know, that you're out of the corner or you're, yeah. you know, uh, you're doing some of that kind of stuff, but uh, skip over anything that you want to skip over. But uh, how did you end up um, in, in the CBD, you know, a business to some extent and where in the world did the name Global Widget uh, come from? Right, so uh, me and my partner, Donnie, we'd actually done some business 10, 15 years ago together. Um, I had a jacuzzi business. He had some sort of jacuzzi business. Oh, that's so funny. We randomly met. He yeah. was importing jacuzzis from China. I, I had stuff going on. And uh, we kind of knew that we were going to eventually do something big together. Okay. And um, so we had always stayed in touch over the years. And lo and behold, someone presented CBD to us. Never had heard of it. So we looked it up, tried it. It worked. I loved it. I started looking into it. Donnie started looking into it. At the time I was doing real estate, he had a couple car lots. We got together one day and we said, you know, let's, let's go for it. It it looks like a raw market. It looks like a new market. The products work. Yeah. It looks like it's going to be going up. So let's take a stab at it. He started selling off all his portfolio of cars. I started selling off all my portfolio of real estate properties. We literally got together in, in the back of one of his car lots and started and and kind of our deal was my partner's real into manufacturing and and that kind of stuff so our deal was 
you make it and I sell it. And you know, I'm the sales guy and the advertising guy. And that's kind of been our mantra and mantra and it's worked. And so we started with one product. My partner had some experience getting products into gas stations. So we figured let's start there. There's 154,000 gas stations. And you know, that's where five hour energy got their start. That's where Red Bull got their start. And that's how you could really blow up. So we made one product. I started cold calling. And if someone answered the phone on the other line, they were getting samples and product. I don't care who they were, where they were, what they were doing. And that's what I said, we started with sales. And uh, it just started snowballing. We Some people started selling, we hired somebody, introduced new products, hired more people. You know, three years later, here we are with 200 people, um, doing a lot of revenue and things are going really good. And, and like I said, we're trailblazing, we're pioneering this industry. And that's probably what keeps me going, right? Because I'm the kind of guy, I like the chaos. I like chaotic, figuring things out. And every day we have to figure things out. Something new. Every day. And the CBD market, it's an emerging market. It's new. So it's not, it doesn't change on a yearly basis. It changes every month, month to month, something else comes up and you got to pivot. You got to change. You got to really be prepared to move whatever direction the market's changing. And me and Donnie have built our business to be able to be fluid and, and pivot to wherever we need to go. I think for, again, for marketers, again, depending on, on, on where you are, what level you're at, and then the size of the company that you work for, you work with, you know, I think one of the interesting things that you just brought up is again, the fact that this industry that you're in is changing at absolute lightning pace, but whether it's changing at that speed or whatever speed the industry is changing, there's only one path, which is to move forward. And if you're not in the thick of trying to figure out uh, how to market that brand, how to separate yourself from your competitors in the market, somebody else in your space is going to do just that. And you're going to end up sometimes potentially finding yourself standing around a brand that maybe had great sales um, to some extent, but those sales then kind of start to drop a little, they start to drop a little. And the next thing you know, you're, you know, you're eighth or 10th in a category that you used to be first in, and you're kind of scratching your head trying to figure that out. It's a blessing in some ways when a CEO has an understanding of that, because a lot of CEOs don't. I'm sure you know that a lot of CEOs of big companies don't understand the, the role that marketing can play in that. And sometimes it ends up being more of a, a push, you know, from a, a CMO or a VP of marketing or whatever that is into, we need to build this brand. And a CEO might say, this, this isn't broken. Why would we want to do anything else? But it's been right. interesting, you know, that you, you seem to understand the speed at which this is happening. You're seeing it around you. And the fact that you like the chaos uh, to some extent probably helps your teams. Oh, it, it definitely does. And and the thing is, is, you know, we have sales. So now we're kind of turning our focus to the marketing side, right? We have sales, people know our brand. How can we really let everyone know our brand, right? Because we're in so many stores now. Now is the time where we're putting that extra focus on the marketing. And the hardest thing, like, like we said, and, you know, obviously we're working together is, can you advertise on Facebook? Can you not advertise on Facebook? Can you advertise on Google? Can you not advertise on Google? There's so many restrictions, but also to me, that's what makes it great because everybody has to play by the same rules. So it's not like because there's all these rules, it's harder on me and easier on someone else. It's harder on everybody. So to me, what makes things so fun is you got to just outwork the other guy because there isn't historical data. There isn't anything you can just read and know to go do it. So you got to figure it out on your own. And, you know, me and Donnie, we're, we own the company, but we're, we're all in, you know, we're in the trenches working with people. He works mainly with manufacturing and shipping and compliance. I'm working with the sales team, the marketing team. Yeah. So it, it's kind of cool. Our, our, um, you know, our dynamic we have. The one great thing about me and my partners, our vision never wavers. You know, we have the same vision. We wanna win and we wanna be the best company. We wanna offer the best products at the highest quality that is even possible. We wanna be the gold standard of CBD and that's what we're gonna do, you know? It also seems like, again, one of the things that you talked about just there is the fact that sometimes you have to surround yourself with people that are willing to just put a little extra hustle into it. That doesn't necessarily mean working more hours, but it does mean- Usually does though. Yeah, sometimes (laughs) it does. But it also sometimes means that when you get a no about something, sometimes that no is because either the person on the other end who's telling you, no, you can't do this is lazy and doesn't want to help you, or, or it's realizing, okay, well, if they've said no to me, then they've probably said no to the other 30 people that have called if I can figure out a way to get a yes, that you can do this, these other 29 probably gave up yep. and I'm going to be light years, 
you know, ahead of them. Advertising in this space, again, there's so much confusion about it, and I won't, I won't make you go too far down the rabbit hole, but just the difference between hemp and the difference between CBD and the difference between um, a vaping and the difference yep. between all those products to some people and to, to some areas where you want to advertise your product that's completely legal versus uh, a, a product that somebody might think just as a general consumer, they don't know the difference between the two. There's a lot of places you guys can't advertise because it's just easier just to say no yep. than understand or take the time to understand the difference. Those are opening up, more of those opportunities are opening up. And again, it sounds like the earlier that you are as one of those earlier adapters, you know, the faster you're gonna be able to at least just compete with others that have also figured yep. out that the hustle is an important part of the game. And that's why we've done everything in house because when things pivot, when, you, when you're doing everything in-house, you could pivot faster than someone else. So we actually do our own manufacturing in-house. We have a huge facility, yeah. you know, probably 100 workers wearing the lab coats. I mean, it's really impressive. It looks great. But when something in the pipeline comes and changes, we could walk out to our manufacturing facility and on a dime, we can make a change. You're not using a co-packer or somebody right. that could take months and months and exactly. months to make the adjustment so We're not using the co-packer where... What are you going to do then? You know, you're going to wait for him to, to redo all your labels and your package. And so everything we do in-house, there's a strategy and there's a reason behind it because the market changes so fast and we're prepared to change. And, you know, one of the things we're actually waiting for now is the regulations because we've built our business prepared for the regulations. Yeah. Once the regulations come in, half the companies are going to, they're going to go by the wasteland because they won't be able to perform up to the regulation standards. And that's kind of what we're doing and prepared for. We want to be the regulation gold standard, you yeah. know? And um, so, you know, we have a very impressive chief compliance officer that we've hired on and she's really making a huge impact for us. And really everything we do now is compliance related. And uh, I could really speak on one thing that's a, that's a fact, right? Because I actually started selling. And in 2016, every conversation I had was about education on CBD. I mean, these people I was cold calling never heard of it. And of course, when you go into, oh, it comes from the hemp plant, they're thinking weed. And so I had to do a lot of education, every single phone call. Well, bleeding into 2017, it was still educating people. Towards the end of 2017, it got into the legal. Is it legal? Where is it legal? Why is it legal? So our business put a lot of focus on lawyers. We hired yeah. the best CBD lawyers in the country. We teamed up with some local lawyers. And 2018 was lawyer, 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 legal, legal, legal. That's all it was. And guess what, though? We we bullied through it because we brought the law team in-house. 2019, things have changed. It went from education to legal to now it's compliance. How is it being made? Where is it being made? Why is it being made there? How is it shipped? When is it shipped? Is it stabilized? Whatever it may be. So now that's our whole focus as a business, right? And, and what's funny is those things change within the sales arena, too. Yeah. So our sales team isn't calling and saying, oh, our CBD is better than their CBD. It's calling saying, our CBD is made better than theirs. It's made in a fa manufacturing warehouse in-house. Come see everything because yeah. we know where our hemp come from. We know where it goes and everything is under our roof. And that's what you should be confident and con confident about. And I think as you guys move now a little outside of that, in that in initial trajectory of uh, educate, um, you know, the people that you were calling on, uh, you know, almost business to business. Now that you're really starting to expand in the consumer space, you're probably going to run into some of that same thing all over again. Right. Uh, but now rather than one on one or, you know, two on two, you're doing it at thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people at a time where your content as well as your advertising is really going to have to be wrapped around education to some extent, because there's still plenty of people who don't understand the difference. There's people that probably uh, are sniffing around a little bit online to figure out, am I allowed to order right. gummies? And the more you have that kind of content to let them know what they can order, what they can't order, what the differences are between that, the more likely, as you know, that you're going to slowly win them over. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to be, they, you know, they see an ad for you and instantaneously go, oh my God, I need to, yep. you know, order this. But um, it is interesting to be, you know, at the forefront of that, you know, we have a, a separate digital company that we own. And to your point of kind of seeing how that uh, evolved, it was really interesting because when we, you know, when we first built that company four years ago, which doesn't seem like that long ago, but in this industry, it was, you know, it's, it's, it's a lifetime ago, we were having to help people to understand how 
display ads were even bought now with computers and it was being you know done through bidding system. And we'd spend our first three or four calls with them, just helping to under, them to understand that piece of it. You know, four years later, we don't have to do that nearly as much. We still do it to some extent. We don't do it nearly as much, but it took four years to kind of educate people on, on yep. what that is. And now to your point, they're wanting to know, okay, what makes you different? What makes you better? You know, what is this? Where do you see this industry headed? Where do you see CBD headed? Do you feel like it's already hit a growth point? Do you feel like the sky is still the limit to some extent? What What's untapped out there? Yeah, the sky is definitely still the limit because it's just now starting to tote into the mainstream, right? Where, yeah, there's tons of sales going on, but when you talk about the big box stores, and I don't like to always name, you know, specifically, sure. but the big guys, the Walmarts, the Targets, they're eventually going to get CBD. And most of these guys, we've had meetings with some of them They've all been looking at CBD for 6, 12, 18, 24 months. Most of them have actually hired CBD specific people within their business to help them to start educating yeah. on CBD. So either, that's really either white cool. labeling or do you think if you're able to build your brand fast enough that they'll want you to be kind of that lead competitor in the market because then you become a product that consumers have been educated on, now you've become a brand potentially right. to some extent and so they almost have to carry you when yep. they're ready to carry it because you're, you know, a leader in the marketplace. Is that yeah, where you see definitely it? Definitely the goal is the brand, right? And get our brand in there. However, almost all big box stores carry private label. I mean, that's in any industry, whether sure. it's skincare, whatever. And again, that's another reason we built our business the way we did. So let's just say we get with a huge box, big box. Yep. They carry hemp bombs. They want a private label. Guess what we could do? It's right there. We can make them their own private label in-house. So they don't have to deal with another company, all the accountings through us. We have our own digital marketing people, all our graphic designers in-house, all our social media. So we could do big co-op, you know, marketing sure. ploys with these guys. So we've built our business prepared, like I said, pivot, right? So if they want to all of a sudden pivot to their own brand, okay, no problem. You're ready. Yeah, we're ready for that. You got the facilities um, to do just that. If they want to carry multiple brands, we have that also. So we're trying to make sure we could check off every box. Where did the Global Widget name come from? I'm going to come back to that yeah. as we... So me and Donnie came up with that because we've both been entrepreneurs our whole lives. And, you know, I've sold cars, real estate, cell phones, a whole plethora of stuff. And he has too. So we kind of just thought Widget could be anything, right? Whatever and, it becomes. Uh, whatever it becomes. And um, so that's why we came up with the name Global Widget. Kind of our parent company, obviously Hemp Bombs, Nature Script, and Pure Paws are our three brands that we're focused on selling. But Global Widget is our our big boy. It's our it's our manufacturing company. Yeah. And so Global Widget's kind of the, the king in there right now. You've got a couple of other companies that fall underneath it that will build in their own space uh, to some extent and and, uh, and certainly could potentially lead uh, you know with that. So look, as we start to wrap this, that was almost a half an hour. Really? I, can you believe how fast that goes in a podcast? Wow, that did go fast. Told you it goes fast, yeah. my friend. Uh, as we start to wrap, uh, first of all, thank you again for joining us on, on the show. For a marketer that's out there for a CMO, and again, we're a podcast, we're a niche podcast. We're not really meant for, you know, for a general consumer who's just learning marketing. This is really a lot of VPs, a lot of right. big brands, a lot of people that are trying to to also figure out, you know, where are they in, in the various spaces and how does somebody like you, um, you know, they may have a CEO that's challenging to work with. They may have a CEO who doesn't understand the need to spend money or to test products or to test marketing uh, you know, pieces Sometimes it's great to be able to hear and just know that there are CEOs that are out there that understand that space. It, it it's you know it's ironic to some extent you came up through sales and so when you come through sales, <laughs> it's a lot easier sometimes to know. Look, you got to hustle a little bit to make this work, as opposed to maybe sometimes again a CEO that came up through a completely different vertical, came up through accounting or came up through you know creative right. or, or whatever that is. And so that there's certainly something to be said for that. But uh, as we wrap this piece, I'd love to kind of um, hear from you as to who you feel like has really inspired you. You know, it, it sounds like you, you, like a lot of people, you kind of muddled around in a few different industries for a little while. And then, you know, it's not luck, but sometimes you end up with a, a partner. You just got to take a risk. Yep. Sometimes you literally just have to take a risk out there. And so are there people out there in your life, whether that's, uh, you know, uh, your, your mom or your dad or somebody else that really has been that inspiration for you to be able to kind of do what you've done? I don't know if there's one specific person, right? Obviously, yeah. I, I, a lot falls on my dad, right? We're really close. He actually works with me at Global Widget, which is awesome. That's cool. Yeah, it's great. 
But, you know, really me and Donnie has, has probably been the biggest push, right? Me and my partner, because we push each other, you know, and it's really fun because we're so engaged and so all in. And I mean, every day, every night we're on the phone together and we've had a couple quarrels here and there, but man, if I, you know, I've had a lot of partners over the years because I've, I've been an entrepreneur. It, it's not even close where we're, we're able to push each other to the next level over and over and over. And that hasn't stopped. And that's been probably the biggest benefit to our business. And um, I, I would have to say probably that, you know, yeah. just, just the us pushing each other every day. And quite frankly, one thing I've learned is you got to hire really good people. And, and you start hiring really good people, you learn a lot from them. And, and quite frankly, you know, me and Donnie are actually having to kind of take a step back in certain areas because you got these great people, you got to let them work and you got to let them put their skills out there. And um, so that's sometimes fun, sometimes challenging. Sure. But man, it, it's really good to see because, and, and I can't reiterate this point enough, we have 208 people just for our brands and every person is is vital, you know, and we're still hiring and uh, we still have some gaps. And that's probably the most fun is just continuing to build this monster and see where it's going. And, and another thing is we hire internally, right? And so when we hire, we're collaborative. Like we're, everyone's together. Everyone knows what each other's doing. And that's another real benefit. We don't have 20 people that live in Texas that work for us and 10 people in New York. I mean, we're in house. And you know, when we do meetings, it's it's impressive because everyone's they're all there. Everyone's there. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and so maybe again, that's the best point to be able to take away from this is, you know, that you've kind of hit the right momentum. You know, you've got the right teams, whether those are internal or external, when they're helping to educate you, when you're sitting in oh, a yeah. meeting and you say, this is how this works. You know, I've always said when, when one of you know my employees leans over and kind of puts their hand on my shoulder or my leg and kind of says, well, that's how we used to do it, but here's how we actually do it now. That's when you know, okay, I've actually probably hired the right person <laughs> yeah. because now they're educating me Without and let them loose, you know, let them do the things uh, that they can do. So well, listen, 30 minutes, Kevin Collins, <laughs> uh, CEO of Global Widget. We appreciate it. We appreciate the opportunities to bring in all kinds of different marketers, entrepreneurs, CEOs, people that can hopefully just help you not only do better work, but understand what's out there in the marketplace to continue to you know, inspire you to do great work. So thank you again, and we'll catch you next time on the CMO Suite. Thanks for hanging out in the CMO Suite. The podcast for marketers who want to be in the know. Presented by Connectivity Holdings. You're a C-level manager. You shouldn't have to know the difference between behavioral or contextual targeting, but your agency should. UConnect provides brands and biddable teams direct access to platforms like the Trade Desk, Google, Amazon, Facebook, OTT, and more. Their U.S.-based traders can train your in-house team or provide complete transparency with no minimums and CPM-based service pricing for true transparency, something Mighty Hive, the Trade Desk, and Centro simply don't offer. Tired of being the smartest one in the room? Reach out to UConnect today for a free demo. UConnect, the world's leader in true, transparent, biddable media.